as soon as I decided that I was going to come to Uruguay, then one of the things that I knew I wanted to do was come and stay at an estancia. Now, I'm not a particularly experienced horse rider, but I do really enjoy it, and where better to come riding than the beautiful Sierras of Uruguay? So for the past few days, I've been staying at Caballas de Luz, and here Lucy and her husband have been welcoming tourists from all over the world for over a decade, and they've made the most magnificent home. And today, I'm going to show you what it's like on an average day at Caballas de Luz. Every evening you're asked what you'd like to have for breakfast the next morning. Breakfast is served in the rooms and everything here is freshly made. So the bread's made on site, the chutneys and jams are all made here too, and even the fruits collected from around the estancia. It's an absolutely gorgeous place to have breakfast, surrounded by the fruit trees, including wild kiwis, apples, and even lemons that they use to make the fresh lemonade. I've had a very lovely, leisurely wake up. Now, I'm going to make my way down to the river, which I can hear. It's only a few minutes away. Lucy said it obviously is a little bit cold, but it's nice to go and have a swim. It's really pleasant that this whole area is shady. It's just absolutely picture perfect. I knew that we were near the river. Lucy said it was only a couple of minutes walk, but I did not expect it to look this gorgeous. Mini waterfall and little plunge pool there. And then on this side, lovely and calm, palm trees and a rope swing. This is absolutely heavenly. now and the sun is slightly less hot so Lucy suggested that we get the horses ready and go out on a ride but I thought first of all I'd sit down and have a little chat with her and learn about how Caballos de Luz all started. I believe I did travel a lot and I really thought I would never stop to travel I was so comfortable on the road and in trains and everywhere and then just a time came where I started feeling that I was over dragging my backpack everywhere and I'm, I'm a musician also so like I wanted a piano and you know and uh, so the time came to kind of start to settle and I almost settled in, in Costa Rica oh, I had nice. a lovely place uh, in sight but in the end it was Uruguay uh, that kind of called me and I, I never really looked back it was really exactly the time where I was ready to put down my roots and have my own garden and have a dog you know I always wanted a dog oh, for example yeah. and uh, uh, and just have my own horses and keep them and, you know, not to have to buy them and sell them. So it was perfect timing for me. When you first moved here, mm -hmm. how much was there to do? Or were you starting oh, completely from scratch? Oh, everything. There, I don't know how much you've been filming, but everything you see around my house, we... Uh, we built, we planted, we fenced. There was nothing here. We had to do the water lines. It was a few very intense years. Beautiful I because bet. all the beginnings, all such beginning, there's such magic in it. You know, you plant your first five fruit trees and your first foals are born and you build a corral and there are so many like dreams that you are manifesting because suddenly you have all this space and, uh, and, and all these ideas. So it was a really magical time. And also when I look back, I like almost want to faint as how oh. much work it was. <laughs> Just like, you know, things breaking down and and um, I was not really prepared to settle. I knew how to build a tent, but then even... You learn on the job, Exactly, you learn. You learn much more about machines and hard work than you ever thought you would. What kind of visitors do you normally get here? What's your typical... We, uh, we it is like pre and post uh, COVID. We use, but usually, let's say, everything's going to go back to normal. So uh, usually uh, we, tr uh, we work with mainly with foreign tourists. Mm -hmm. So uh, they would come from, from Europe, maybe mainly from Central Europe, like Germany and 
England, uh, I'm not sure if that's Central Europe, probably not, <laughs> the Netherlands, and then from North America, from, uh, from the States and from uh, Canada, there will be like the big bulk of guests, and then some freak guests from, we've had people from Japan and from China. And, uh, A nice mix then. And very, it's been really interesting. And uh, the slowly, slowly, we are getting more like Uruguayans in and people from Argentina and Brazil. That's nice. I think they're a little scared about the vegetarian kitchen. I really? Think that's the I suppose they're used to the asado. And <laughs> I know. Uh, this is changing because also in the last 15 years, we've seen a lot of change, even in the restaurants in, in Montevideo. And there is like starting to be a demand for this. But when we arrived here, it was we had people call and say like, yes, I want to come, but I want my steak, you know. And uh, and we were like, such a stereotype. No. <laughs> I know, I know. This is, um, but this has happened. Or oh, the woman, she would call and she would say, I can, I can eat vegetarian, but my husband won't come if okay. you don't make him his asado, you know. And so we said, well, then he can't come. <laughs> yeah, sorry about and, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but slowly, slowly, they're also coming in. I think the. Um, the COVID story as we non, no one could travel for a year. Mm. So everyone also started to explore their own country. So the Sierras of Rocha, not many people knew about them. And so we are getting, we are getting a little more famous also in Uruguay. So we're just getting the horses ready now and then going out for a ride. There's going to be four of us and we're going to head down to the river and hopefully get some lovely views of the Sierras. So here in Uruguay, they ride neck feigning, which essentially means using one hand. So if you were a gaucho, you'd have your other hand free for herding cattle or opening gates or other activities like that. And this area is really beautiful. I've spent a lot of time along the coast, which as lovely as it is, it's nice to come and see the Sierras, see the birds soaring above, pretty special place. We're just approaching the river now. It's pitch perfect. And the horses here are all trail horses, so they obviously know the route pretty well. Well, that was a really lovely ride up into the mountains. And now we're back at Caballos de Luz. And I'm gonna be watching the sunset from this point here where the fire pit is. And I've got a glass of very local wine as well, which Lucy told me she actually had at her wedding. I've had a really wonderful time here the past few days at Caballos de Luz between the hospitality, the beautiful views, obviously the lovely horse ride and also the really tasty food. It's a very special place and I feel like a couple of days wasn't long enough. I could definitely stay a lot longer and I hope to return in the future. <laughs>